Good morning. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Marion and I've been coming to this church for about 30 years. Um, I live in Yeovil, but I work in Sherborne as an occupational therapist. Um, this morning, we're continuing our series on Jesus' Jubilee from the passage in Luke 4, where Jesus stood up in the temple and read from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to be hope for the poor, freedom for the brokenhearted, new eyes for the blind, and to preach to the prisoners, you are set free. Today we're focusing on Jesus saying he would be new eyes for the blind. Where it says new eyes for the blind, the Passion Translation footnote says the translation of the Greek is looking up to heaven. We're told it's the same word that was used in the story of the feeding of the 5,000, when Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, gazed into heaven and gave thanks to God. I love the phrase gazed into heaven. It speaks to me of how Jesus was able to look beyond the natural resources and his situation, how he was able to gaze up into heaven and focus on his father. Jesus said, I can only do the things I see my father doing. He had the ability to see things from his father God's perspective, looking to him with eyes of love, trust and thankfulness that enabled him to expect the miraculous. The Holy Spirit wants to give us new eyes of faith so that we too can gaze into heaven and look beyond the circumstances around us. With eyes of faith, we too will be able to see things from heaven's perspective, looking to our Father God with eyes of love, trust and expectation like Jesus did. Hebrews chapter 11 is a great chapter on faith and acting with eyes of faith. Verse 1 says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This chapter then goes on to list heroes of the faith, including Abraham, who was prepared to take God at his word and trust his promises to him because... His eyes of faith were set on the city with unshakable foundations, whose architect and builder is God himself. There are many more examples in the Bible where people have their eyes of faith opened to gaze into heaven, to see things from heaven's perspective, and I would like to share a few of them. In Genesis 28, we read about Jacob's dream, where he saw a stairway to heaven with angels going up and down it. God spoke to Jacob in this dream, promising he would give him the very land that he was lying on, to him and to his descendants. He also promised him that he would never leave him. Jacob was so impacted by this dream that when he woke up, he said, surely God is in this place, and I wasn't aware of it. What an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. In Two Kings, we read about how the king of Aram was at war with the king of Israel. Elisha the prophet was apparently getting words of knowledge for the king of Israel and had been advising him about his enemy's movements. This enabled Israel's army to keep thwarting the king of Aram, who was furious about this, and he sent a fighting force to catch Elisha. In verse 17 it says, Elisha's servant got up early the next morning and went outside to find there were troops and horses and chariots everywhere. And he cried out to Elisha, Oh, sir, what will we do now? Elisha responded, Don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And then he prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hillside around Elisha was full of horses and chariots of fire. And then in Judges 6, we read about Gideon, who came face to face, face with an angel. The angel greeted him with the words, Mighty hero, God is with you. And he then gave him an assignment from God to rescue Israel from the Midianites. Gideon questioned this and asked for various signs to prove that it really was God speaking to him. In one of these signs, he brought a pot of cooked goat's meat covered with broth, which he was told to pour onto a rock. The angel touched this with his staff, causing fire to flare up from the rock and burn it up, and then he disappeared. It was only after the angel had gone that Gideon realised it was indeed the angel of the Lord, and said, Oh, sovereign Lord, I'm doomed. I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. 
The Lord replied, it's all right. Don't be afraid. You're not going to die. And then in Isaiah 6, we hear how the prophet Isaiah had a vision that he was given of the Lord. It says, I clearly saw the Lord God, commander of angel armies. He was seated on his exalted throne, towering high above me. His long flowing robe of splendour filled the temple. And then the last one I want to share with you is from the New Testament, where we have the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus after Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus joined them on their walk, and the Bible, but the Bible says they were prevented from recognising it was him. We're told while he was walking with them, he carefully unveiled to them the revelation of himself throughout scripture. But it was only after he joined them for supper and broke bread that they realised it was him, and then he disappeared. They said, why didn't we recognise it was him? Didn't our hearts burn with holy passion while he, we walked beside him? He unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scriptures. So how are all these stories relevant to us? Well, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to open our eyes. I believe that like he did with Abraham, he wants to give us a vision of his heavenly realm, his kingdom, and make this as real and more important to us than our earthly home. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. I believe that like he did with Jacob, the Holy Spirit wants to make us aware of his presence in this place and give us his promises. He wants to give us powerful encounters in the place of prayer or in our dreams where we experience an open heaven and see where he is at work. Joel 2 verse 28 says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Like he did with Gideon, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to show us our potential. I believe that he wants to call us our, out, out in our identity. Like he called out Gideon as a mighty warrior, as a hero. He wants to call out our destiny and reveal the plans he has for us and give us courage for what lies ahead. Like he did with Elisha's servant, I believe he wants to, us to open our eyes to what's going on in the spiritual realms, in spiritual warfare. 1 John 4 verse 4 says, The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And like he did with the prophet Isaiah, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to reveal his awesome glory so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. And like he did with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, I believe he wants to give us profound revelations from scripture so that our, our hearts too burn with holy passion so that the words come alive and leap off the page. Psalm 119 verse 18 says, Open my eyes to see the miracle wonders hidden in your word. And the holy, it's the Holy Spirit that can do this for us. However, there are many things that can distort our vision and prevent us from seeing with eyes of faith. And one thing I know has distorted my vision or held me back from seeing with eyes of faith is disappointment or the fear of disappointment, particularly disappointment in relation to unanswered prayer. So I was really impacted whilst preparing this talk when I came across the following passage in a book by the author Lana Vorsa. I had a strong sense that God wanted me to share this with you as well this morning. In her book, she shares a picture God gave her. You may want to close your eyes and imagine this scene. She says, I saw Jesus standing before the people of God. He was inviting them into new directions, new pathways, new adventures, new levels of exploration and faith. And he had his hand outstretched. As the invitation was before them, I heard many people saying things like, but why did this happen, Lord? But why did that happen? Then I looked at their eyes and they had sunglasses on. And on their sunglasses was written the word disappointment. Everything that they were looking at was being viewed through the lens of disappointment. But what struck me strongly in that vision was that these were sunglasses and they could be taken off. It was a choice to wear them. It was a choice to stay disappointed. Then as I looked into the eyes of Jesus, I saw compassion, deep compassion for the pain and for the weariness that many have faced. 
but in his eyes I also saw a longing. It was a longing for his people to take his hand, and through their free will and their ability to choose not to live in the disappointment anymore, to take his hand and choose to believe again. I heard the Lord say, Look away from the disappointment, lay down the whys, lay down the butts, and take off the sunglasses that are blocking the view of the sun. It was an invitation to look at him again. This really resonated with me because I've struggled quite a bit with the disappointment of unanswered prayer and I know that this has held me back at times. And then I remembered a recent entry in my journal which I'd also like to share with you. I wrote this after seeing the film 3000 Years of Longing. I really enjoyed this film. I won't spoil it for you but the basic premise is a modern day take on Aladdin where the female lead character meets a genie and is able to ask for her three greatest heart's desires. This got me thinking about my own heart's desires and prayers and about my disappointment and questions over my unanswered prayers. I started talking to God about how this can sometimes make it hard to keep hope alive, to keep trusting him. And I just felt, wrote down what I felt him say to me. I felt he said, I died for the difficult questions. I died to show you that you can still trust me even when things don't make sense. I died for the disappointments and the broken dreams. I understand because I have felt this pain. That's why you can trust me. Trust that whatever you're going through or have to go through, I will be walking alongside you. There is nothing you have been through or will have to go through that I haven't been through and won't be right there with you. I believe we need trust to help us take off the sunglasses of disappointment to see with eyes of faith. But how do we build that trust? I believe one of the ways we can do this is by reading his living word, reminding ourselves of the truth of who he is, that he is faithful, that he does care, that he's always working for our good. Luke 11 verse 34 says, the eyes of your spirit allow revelation to enter into your being. When your heart is open, the light floods in. When your heart is hard and closed, light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place. As we open our hearts to him, the living word and the light of the world, revelation light will flood in. As we look to the sun, he will give us eyes of faith. I believe he is more than willing to do this. In Ephesians 1, Paul prays the following. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. He wants to flood our imagination with light. He wants to take our imagination, fill it with his thoughts, ideas and insights and show us things that we could never have thought of on our own. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10 says, He has revealed to us his inmost heart and deepest mysteries through the Holy Spirit who constantly explores all things. And then I particularly love the next verse uh, that I came across recently. Psalm 25 verse 14 in the Passion Translation says, There's a private place reserved for the lovers of God where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. What an incredible privilege we have as lovers of God that he wants to share the revelation secrets of his promises. This verse reminded me very much of the story of Mary and Martha. Many of you all know how Martha invited Jesus into their home and then became frustrated with Mary because she wasn't helping with any preparations for the meal. In the Passion Translation it says, Mary sat down attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation that he shared. Jesus said, Mary has discovered the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She is undistracted and I won't take this privilege from her. I love the way it's recorded that Mary absorbed every revelation Jesus shared. She really knew how to listen. He had her undivided attention because she loved him and it was more important to her than anything else to spend that time with him. Jesus doesn't want to rush time with us. He understands the pressures we're under, but he enjoys our company and wants us to enjoy, enjoy him. He wants us to stay longer, to linger. 
when I was preparing this, I felt he was saying he wants us to learn to linger in his love because this is one of the most important things he wants to reveal to us. We love because he first loved us. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 to 19 says, I pray, pray he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favour until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions, how deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love, how enduring and inclusive it is, endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. So there may be several ways in which people feel God is speaking to them this morning. Maybe like Jacob, you need to know that God is really in this place, that he is with you and that he will never leave you. Maybe you long for a breakthrough and an open heaven in your situation, to have eyes of faith where you can see God at work. Maybe like Gideon, you need to hear God calling out your identity, to see you as he sees you with the potential he sees in you. Maybe you want to discover the destiny and the plan he has for your life. Maybe where you've been disappointed or hurt, you've hardened your heart, but you want to choose to trust again, to open your heart and let the light flood in so that you can see with eyes of faith and take his hand to move out in new adventures. Maybe like the people of God in that picture, you need to choose to take off the sunglasses of disappointment so you can see the sun more clearly. In the verse that the begin we read at the beginning, Jesus said he was anointed to be our hope. Maybe you long to experience that resting place of God's love as the source of your life, to know that intimacy with Jesus where you can sit at his feet like Mary did. Maybe you long to discover that place where you can choose to sit close to him, linger in his love and hear the revelation secrets he wants to share with you. However God's been speaking to you this morning, I encourage you not to go away and forget about it. If he's speaking to you, he wants you to stop and take notice. I believe the more we do this, the more he will reveal himself to us. So you may want to pray this through with somebody, maybe somebody that's with you or somebody in your small group, somebody that you feel you can speak to. I'm just going to close in prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you that you want to give us eyes of faith. Thank you that you want to take away any disappointments and just restore our hope and our trust in you. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would come right now and just touch our hearts. Help us to open up to you, to not have hard hearts. Help us to learn how to just linger in your presence and spend time with you to hear the secrets of your heart. We love you, Lord, and we just want to worship you this morning. And thank you for anything, all that you've said to us. Help us to take it away and to remember what you said and to treasure it in our hearts like Mary did. Amen.